Blood Curse, Season 1, Episode 4, Thoughts. This episode is called Signs or Pertanda. And yeah, another episode I love. Spoilers for these first four episodes. The top link in the description box will enable you to donate to the second half of the Strikers. And then there's some links to help explain why this is such an important strike. So let's dive into the episode. So yeah, we open in 1998, which, you know, that is when those murders, the, the massacre happened, which we were told about back in episode one. And throughout the episode every so often it'll cut back to 1998 and we see the, the you know how Wulan's mother and I guess we can't call him Wulan's father anymore adoptive father I guess stepfather though she and her brother thought that they were that that uh, they were genetically related but yeah um, we see how they meet and how the relationship forms and I really appreciate that they waited until after he died to show us this because now it is like this bitterly like they were so in love you know and now he's gone and she's devastated and it just it hits so much harder than if we had seen this before you know yeah before anything happened to him. So so yeah, very nicely done. Excellent decision there. Whether I you know, I don't know if this was the the, the screenwriter or the editor or who, but someone made an excellent call there. And let's see. Yeah, and, and we see that, you know, she lies about having children. You know, she claims, oh, you know, that's not my son, that's my brother. And you know he's like, oh, you know, bring him. He'll he'll have a great time here. And she's like, oh, he's he's dead. Rest in peace. Which, you know, we happen to know that he isn't. But you know, a lot of women who already have children feel that if they tell men, uh, you know, that they already have children, that that's gonna really, you know, tarnish them if they don't still have the 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 father and you know in in some sort of romantic relationship with them so yeah again you know showing sympathy for you know there's been a lot of I, I don't know about Indonesian media but in Western media there's a lot of oh crap does Indonesia count as the one American media there's a lot of American media where single mothers are demonized and you know anyone who gets a divorce or or breaks off a relationship you know it's seen as wrong and the woman is usually blamed for it even though it's very a lot of the time it's something about the man that led to the the breakup there's a lot of pressure on women to stay in relationships so a lot of them, if they break off a relationship, it's because it got extremely bad. Love the tracking shot as we enter. I can, is it called a funeral or is it a wake? I'm I'm not 100% sure, but you know, yeah, just like you are, you know, it's the kind of thing that you'd see from Brian De Palma, and yeah, love to see it. Really glad that it's still you know, that we're still seeing that that sort of thing, at least some. And holy crap. So the show was already really messed up. And I love it. I'm not complaining. I'm I'm saying I I love this. This is a new level of how morbid it gets. Like the the you know the the dead body is lying there and there's you know like a cotton in his nose and then it, it moves a little bit and and they're like what what is what is going on you know and and one of them suggests you know maybe you should take the cotton out and then it gets all the way out and some blood runs out and then a bug crawls out oh just so nasty god i love this show and i i'm not sure uh i'll i guess i'll just call her ma'am um, cuz that's what wulan calls her but, you know, she approaches Ulan and says, you know, oh, you know, he gave me really great investment advice. And, you know, I 
have to wonder if there's going to be some, you know, because they, because she and Wulan talk for maybe a minute or so, so I can imagine there's going to be something there, you know, also in part because we now have payoff to the, the superstitious um, client is the word, of Wulan, because, you know, she's like, oh, you know, my spiritual advisor said that, and then it turns out to be right, so this is, you know, we're, we're starting to see Wulan become more receptive to the idea of the supernatural, you know, which is, of course, you know, she's the, the skeptic of a modern piece of supernatural horror, and gradually she's, you know, she's either eventually going to accept that she's wrong, or she's going to die because she refused to accept that, you know. So, yeah, appreciate. I'm still, I, I still feel like they're going a little bit too slow. Uh, I, I don't know if the, you know, the, this thing of ten episodes was like a, a mandate, or if it, it, it does not completely feel like it was the decision of the, the writers, because they're, there's a little bit of, of spin their wheels going on in in this episode and the one before it, you know. I still maintain, I, I do think the very first episode did a really great job. I, I, you know, haven't watched the second, I've only watched the second episode once, and it's been, what, two weeks, three weeks? I remember thinking that one also did a, a really solid job building, you know, but... Yeah, episodes three and four, you know, I'm hoping that they'll be able to turn it around. And certainly, we are getting a little bit more information, you know, about what's what's going on. And let's see, that brings us to... Yeah, uh, I really appreciate that, yeah, Wulan's mother is genuinely devastated. Like, she just completely destroyed, you know... Her husband was her whole life. This, you know, they were they were together for twenty five years, and so yeah, you know, the, and and I really appreciate he was the rock. We saw that, it, not Dwayne Johnson, but he he was her rock. He was the one that you know, no matter what happens. You know, like, some of the other family members might be nervous. And I'm not saying just her. You know, Wulan's brother also could get, you know, he's also not the, the best at, at handling new things that, that are big surprises. Which, yeah, fair enough. I'm not saying there's something wrong with that. But, but yeah, the, the you know, in, in earlier episodes, when something bad happened, he would be the one to say, this is going to be fine. We're going to deal with it. You know, we this is not going to destroy us. And with him gone, yeah, you know, and and we did see in earlier episodes, yeah, she was struggling a little more to accept. You know, she she accepted Wulan's decision, and you know, in episode three, she did, you know, say, you know, I, you know, if you felt like it was the right thing to do, then it was the right thing to do, kind of thing. But yeah, you know, we, we already knew that it can really rattle her when something goes wrong, and he was the one who calmed her back down, now he's gone, and yeah, I, I it's a great bit of character writing, you know. And then we have, let's see, the... Uh, yeah, and and we see Wulan tiptoeing around the the death of uh, her father, and and I think yeah, I think I will just call you know say say father, keeping in mind father does not only mean like biological father; it means the the man who raised you as if you were his own. You know, yeah, you know she's she's. She's the one on the phone trying to f deal with the, the death certificate, and you know when when her mom overhears, you know she she clearly she thought that m her mom was still asleep. That's why she made the call. Then she knew, you know, and and then her mom's like, "So who was that on the phone?" She's like, "Ah, oh, yeah, I'm not. Mm, don't worry about it." You know, she she doesn't say. You know, I, I know this is difficult for, for all of us, but we are going to have to deal with the, the death certificate, you know. 
and I, and I do also appreciate there's a there's a lot of fictional media that doesn't address that fact because that is like obviously it's not <laughs> it is not necessarily the thing that hurts the most but it is a thing you have to deal with and yeah you know the the it does hurt and the let's see yeah and and through that we also get to this thing of, you know she finds the the marriage license and then she says the the date's wrong 1998 i was 3 years old by then you know which yeah um very much get the the sense that the the i i yeah so obviously it is you know this reveals that Wulan's mother has been hiding this from them. I wonder who the father is. My, you know, my first thought is could it be uh, uh, Bonden? You know, maybe, but yeah, I, I guess we'll we'll see. And yeah, very tense at the hospital. The the NDA, and they say, you know, we we gen we don't know what caused his death, you know, and yeah, it's again, it's the trope of the this thing of you know, rational scientists trying to to explain away the supernatural kind of thing. So yeah, always a fun trope, and. So ultimately, the scene with the rain, like the the perhaps yeah the most important thing the the ah, what's the word the the thing that it really serves for the story for the narrative is that you know Wulan's father, knowing that she doesn't have a car, you know, and not because he slashed her tires like that creepy ass Fox News host you know yeah he's he sees how bad the rain is he knows oh she you know she has to walk home and he's like I'm gonna I'm gonna turn the car around drive back and and you know give her a ride home and that is the kind of thing you know it's it's corny it's cheesy sure but that is the kind of thing that a lot of women really love to see, you know. He was thinking about her, and he made an effort to help her out. And, yeah, you know, I really appreciate it. It's not this thing of, you know, I mean, yes, he is technically the boss, but he's not bossing her around. He's not being this oh, big alpha, trying to dominate everyone around him. He's just... A legitimately sweet person you know earlier in the episode he said you know oh you, sh you should bring your your brother you know he'll the the kid he'll have a great time here uh, you know this is the sort of thing like there's a lot of bosses in in like professional environments that would never in a million years think of something like that much less suggest it you know they'd be like oh kid as long as you keep them the heck away from me, we're completely okay, you know, kind of thing. So, yeah, you know, he's he's a sweet person, which we already knew from earlier episodes, but he was sweet to an employee even. So, so yeah, you know, it's a very, very credible romance, and it is, yeah, you know, I, I hope, you know, some of, some young men who who feel like oh I just don't know how to appeal to women, you know if you if you happen to watch this episode there are some pointers you know show an interest in her family, show that you care about her and and be willing to to make an effort to to help her out you know I really appreciate it. it's not like oh you know they just had great sex or you know. Yeah, some something like because yes, obviously you know some some people, including some women, do really want that. But a lot of people, you know, perhaps especially women, just really want a partner who takes you know who's willing to take care of them, who's who's going to to help out. And 
and and again, you know, the fact that we're seeing this after he already died really hit you know, yeah, the the it it essentially functions as a sort of metaphor. You know, he was the one taking care of her. He when when it was a rainy day, he you know, he turned his car around and, and drove her home. And now, you know, it's pouring and he's not around anymore. And let's see. Um, yeah, Wulan still insists that, you know, their father was sick. Her brother insists this is black magic. I, I hope, you know, we're almost at the halfway point of the season. I, I really, really hope that the next episode is going to have her be ready to accept that it's not natural causes. And... Yeah, uh, Wulan's brother this one time asked for downers instead of uppers. And, you know, they have a conversation and she points out, you know, I would have been at the funeral, but I didn't want to cause a scene with your sister, which, yeah, you know, that makes a lot of sense. Not not as in, oh, you know, women are irrational, but, like, she feels, you know, Wulan legitimately feels like, you know, this, this woman is a bad influence on her brother, she's bad for the family, that's not, you know, yeah, showing up to the, to the funeral of a family member, of someone who thinks you're bad for the family, that's not, yeah, that, that can go really badly. And, right, I, I completely forgot, yeah, so, I already mentioned the, the narrative reason for the, the rain scene, I appreciate that it starts out as just like creepy like she's sitting there by herself and you hear like thunder in the background is like oh you know and ultimately it doesn't turn out to be like super scary scene but I appreciate that they they fit in a little scare there and yeah so the nightmare that Wulan has you know, it is not the the gnarliest. It's not the the most like visceral scare, but I, in my opinion, it is the most effective psychological scare so far in the the season in the show. I really love. Okay, so evidently, Indonesia has watched the, the haunting because I know a haunting reference when I see one. You know, she's like, Mom, what are you doing over there? And then, you know, Mom is right next to her. And it's like, whose hand was I holding? I mean, seeing, you know, very, very nicely done. And, you know, she turns back, and it's the father. And he comes right, and, and like, his face is all messed up. And then the mother's face is all messed up. You know, the... the and, and you know, he, he's choking Wulan. Is that necessary? I don't think so, but I thought it was fine. But but yeah, legitimately, like really, really messed up. And and yeah, you know, based on her research later, this is her father communicating with her from the afterlife, warning her. You know, so so yeah, very very nicely done. And yeah, I mean, this is the first time we've seen the the father as like, you know, being being threatening to another person, and yeah, especially a loved one. Yeah, he did a really solid acting performance. You know, up to this point, we've only we've seen him be sweet, we've seen him be concerned, but we haven't seen him like charging at a loved one and and attacking like that. But but yeah, very very nicely done. And yeah, you know, there are a lot of belief systems around the world that are convinced that if you have a nightmare about someone who died, that's their spirit contacting you from the afterlife. And let's see. Yeah, and and you know, afterwards you know, we we see this I, uh, it it moved fast, so I I couldn't count if it was a centipede or a millipede. You know, which yeah, you know, those those names translate to like a hundred legs and a thousand legs. But I like to think that, that, like, you know, that's a mistranslation, that originally the, the 
they were just called I don't want to count the number of legs there one and I don't want to count the number of legs there the second because that is like yeah no way those things have a hundred legs or a thousand legs but you know I get fair enough they they were they could appreciate the value of, of exaggeration back then it was like dude I saw this bug in my room it had like a hundred legs anyway the the yeah, we see um, Essa come around to the family, and there's still some tension between him and Wulan. And I really appreciate that it's not making her out to look like she, oh, she's just oversensitive. No, he apologizes, and it's clear that this is the the right thing. This is what should happen. You know, he he crossed the line. And now he's apologizing. It's really, yeah, appreciate that. And let's see the uh, right and and yeah. So Wulan sees that there were two missed calls from Reno, and you know she flashes back to yeah. It's you know no wonder she doesn't want to talk to him. And, 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 you know, based on the, the last episode, I figure it's some sort of, he's, it's maybe part of the, part of the ritual, or, or he's, like, just trying to see how well it's going or something. You know, he's not, like, calling to apologize or something, clearly, because he's still doing it. And Wulan really zoned out in the office, which, again, is treated as completely understandable. Again, really appreciate that you know it's it's a very credible depiction of of grief and yeah the we see you know so so yeah she the the client was like you know i i'd like to to change this you know what's it called the the um this particular investment you know and and auto is like i this the one with the biggest yield you know and She's like, no, my my spiritual advisor has has said that it's a, it's a bad pick. So so let's change it, and then you know Otto sends Wulan this this message saying, yeah, I guess she was right, and and he jokes, you know, maybe we should hire her spiritual advisor, which is obvious, you know, he has no intention of doing any such thing, but yeah, it's again, you know, the 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 rational skeptical voices are being disproven which you know I am a rational skeptic in real life but I appreciate that for supernatural horror to work you kinda have to throw us under the bus but the the yeah you know we we see Wulan doing some some research so yeah that is also that has also made it to Indonesian cinema that's a very American trope that you know but but yeah and and I appreciate the fact that you know yeah she doesn't think oh it was just a nightmare she is starting to be ready to accept the the supernatural is part of what's going on here which yeah uh, I could see how the the nightmare could be the thing that that really puts that over the edge and let's see then we have the yeah so the the drug dealer does tell Wulan's brother about seeing the maggots and yeah at dinner you know Essa and you know Wulan's brother keeps asking Essa about his father and you know the the yeah the the he's called out for it which is a very again very credible like dynamic the family dynamic that you know the the teenage boy is like being very very pushy you know it's like we the audience know that he's right but it's still like dude you you met this guy like couple hours ago you spent I don't know 
I guess, let's see, is it early in the dinner? It's, no, they've, they've taken a bunch of, okay, so yeah, it's been maybe a couple hours of, of knowing him, and you're already, like, prying into his father's death. Like, that's, you know, yes, he is there in part because his father died, but he didn't, like, say, so, here's the details, you know, I've, I've got some detailed images of, of his final moments, you know, but, yeah. Wulan's brother insists it's, you know, it's black magic. It wasn't an accident. It's not. Yeah. And Essa catches Reno and the, the other person, you know, working on the, on the property and, you know, correctly realize, you know, no, they have, you know, it's not, Wulan and her family did not approve of this, you know. So, so yeah, that is part of how they're able to, to do this. They're sneaking onto the property and, like, digging stuff down and, and this sort of thing. And then the, the shower, holy crap, that was, yeah, very, very effective. I appreciate, like, there's a lot of shower scenes in horror, I appreciate that stuff actually happens here. Like, there's there's shower scenes in American horror where it's like, oh, I, you you felt like you cast a sufficiently conventionally attractive woman, and you wanted, to, you know, straight guys in the audience to to be thinking about her sexually. That's that's all. There's nothing else to it here. But but here, you know, there's been a couple. We've seen Wulan in the shower, and now we see her her mother. And I also appreciate that they're very careful to not show any nudity. You know, it's it's completely unnecessary. You know, the the fact that they're being attacked in the shower plays on the fact that we're extremely exposed there. You know, there's the obvious fact that you're naked when you know most of the time you're wearing clothes, and then also just yeah, like essentially. Anything could happen. This is something that American horror, you know, perhaps most famously with, with Psycho, has has explored the fact that yeah, you know, what if you were being attacked there? What would you do? You know, you have you're you're in this very exposed situation, and yeah, this you know, at first it's just a normal shower, and then like some it it's like black water, and she's like trying to get it off her face, and and just. The, the the yeah you know she's she's clearly been hit by the the curse as well and there's like dozens of bugs and you know Wulan's brother insists that she take one of the pills and he does manage to to you know get her to to take it yeah um at the very very end of the the episode we see a woman with a practitioner of, of black magic and he con confirms you know it, it worked I'm really not great with faces I swear it's not a race thing I I struggle with it with white actors as well if it's someone I don't really know so I'm not 100% certain is that Aunt Rima, or yeah, I'm I'm just I'm I'm not entirely sure. Um, one thing I I can't help but wonder if it's maybe the the mother of Essa, since she did say you know I hope I hope something horrible happens to you at at the funeral. Um. And wait, was she the one who showed up to the the funeral of Wulan's father? Maybe, because they didn't. Yeah, I'm I'm not one hundred percent sure. I'm 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 afraid I'm I'm bad with faces, and I don't really. Let's see. Yeah, I'm I'm not really seeing a description of it in the what's it called um, the the plot synopsis thing of the episode 
on IMDb. But yeah, um, really excited to see what happens next. Um, I am a little unsure if, I mean, does this mean that there are two different, like, factions using black magic on the family and, and this, you know, yeah, the, the one we see engaged in black magic at the end of this episode is targeting the Wulan's mother, whereas targeting the father was done by Reno and and uh, and the that guy, yeah. Um, so, you know, there's there's let's see what is six seven episodes left of this season, so maybe they'll be able to to tie that in. You know, cer certainly the fact that they're revealing it this early in the the season suggests that they do have plans. You know, it's not like near the very end and then there's no time for a good wrap up. And certainly, you know, it it's, it seems like by the end of this episode, Wulan is more ready to to look into the supernatural as an explanation for what's happening to her family, what happened to to Essa and his father. So so yeah, you know, there's there's room for spending time on two different black magic practitioner factions. But yeah, um, that is it for... It, right, I gotta say, when, when Wulan's brother was, you know, when he spots one of the, the servants, you know, and, and like, you know, right before we see the, the eyes and, and like the warning and, and or the, yeah, the, the line delivery and such, I honestly, I was sitting there like, please stop accusing the servants, Wulan's brother, like, it's, but, but yeah, you know, teenage boy, he's right about some things, he's completely off about other things, you know, which, like, at, at this point it is very clear, the, the, you know, the, the guy working with Reno about black magic targeting Wulan's family, that guy is not one of the members of the the staff. You know, we've we've seen several of those members, he's not one of them, and if he were, he wouldn't have to be sneaking onto the property to be doing work. He could just claim that it was part of what he was already, you know, oh, you know, one of the, one of the flowers has died. I'm I'm replacing it, you know, and just very very straightforward, uh, you know. So clearly he's, yeah. I I have to admit I'm I'm relieved that it did not turn out to be the the servants, the the house, the the domestic slaves that you know. There's, yeah. Um. Yes, so the, yes, you know, it, it, Indonesia is one of the countries that does still have slavery, and many of them are domestic slaves. The, the and, you know, I, again, this is not an anti-Indonesian, I'm not a, you know, Scandinavian critic, you know, saying that their culture is, is lesser, I, if, you know, I'll, I'll use American, there's a lot of American media that, you know, af after the, the, yeah, also, also during slavery, you know, really, really mocked, you know, African American slaves, and also since then, you know, saying that they're to blame for their own misfortune, rather than the truth, you know, the, the, it started with kidnapping a bunch of people, from Africa, and then, you know, their their offspring was born into slavery. It's, you know, they didn't have a choice in the matter. Uh, you know, so, yeah. Um, I hope that the rest of the season will stick with that, and there won't be, like, a, a twist that one of the servants was actually in on it or something. But, yeah. Um, next...
episode I cover next week. I can see it being like Monday, but yeah, we'll see. And yeah, really, really excited to see what happens next.